Let's finish off this intro video by talking about atelectasis, which is a very common issue that we have. This is a fancy word for lung collapse. Lung tissue collapse, especially relating to the alveoli for our ventilation units. So what we're talking about is this guy, this collapsed alveoli. A more realistic representation may be something like this, which is a bunch of normally inflated alveoli and then their collapsed state, which is just a bunch of respiratory epithelium stuck together. Atelectasis will throw off our balance of ventilation to perfusion. So here's an alveoli and then there will be a capillary going by it. We say the perfusion is Q and ventilation is V. If this alveoli is poorly ventilated for some reason, eventually all of the gas that's in this alveoli will leave and it will collapse. Sometimes it's also an issue of direct pressure on the alveoli, squishing it in that will cause it to collapse, such as in positioning where you have you know, a large abdomen pressing in on your uh, diaphragm and then you'll get some basal atelectasis. So this positioning or really any external compression on lung tissue will cause some degree of atelectasis. If you had a big mucus plug preventing ventilation to a segment of your lung, eventually the lack of ventilation into this alveoli would cause its collapse. We talked about pneumothorax already in this video, but this will cause atelectasis. Because when you have atmospheric pressure in this intrapleural space instead, the recoil forces of the lung will cause it to collapse on itself a little bit around the edges. Or if you have a tension pneumothorax instead, where you're actually accumulating positive pressure in this intrapleural space, you'll have a much more significant compression of your lung tissue. So pneumo or tension pneumo both cause atelectasis to varying degrees. And then the fourth thing I'll show you here is the small airway collapse, which we talked about. So this is our normally inflated airway, and then we'll have some degree of small airway collapse, which means that no additional ventilation to these alveoli will occur, and eventually they will also collapse. So you would get atelectasis as a result of this, and this is especially common in the old age population. Technically, atelectasis will cause what is called shunting, where you have a high amount of perfusion compared to a low amount of ventilation. So this deoxygenated blood will pass right on by without actually participating in gas exchange. So this is just one example of a shunt. And I will very clearly explain shunts and dead space in another video. This is just your first pass at uh, one example of VQ mismatch physiology. What we can do to counteract atelectasis or collapse of these alveoli is by using positive end expiratory pressure. This is PEEP, and you'll be hearing lots about this. This reduces atelectasis by essentially stenting open the alveoli with positive pressure. That works very well to counteract atelectasis. That is a result of positioning and this small airway collapse. And then hopefully it makes sense to you that um, using PEEP will not solve your issue of atelectasis that's resulting from a mucus plug or a large obstructing airway mass. And certainly also not really with a pneumo or a tension pneumothorax. In fact, using positive pressure will often make a pneumothorax worse if you're forcing air out through the disrupted lung tissue and causing a positive pressure buildup in the intrapleural space. That would, by definition, be a tension pneumothorax. Anyways, your everyday atelectasis responds very well to PEEP. So you will almost always use five to eight centimeters of water of PEEP to counteract the little bit of lung collapse that you'd get under general anesthesia. Next up, we'll talk about gas exchange that happens in the alveoli uh, between this and the pulmonary capillaries.